In the early 90s, F1 experienced a real arms race in electronics. In this little game, Williams was the strongest and wanted to go even further, despite the counter-offensive of the fear. At the end of the 1980s, electronics revolutionized Formula One with telemetry, active suspension, initiated by Lotus, which tested it in 1983, and the semi-automatic gearbox inaugurated by Ferrari in 1989. The big teams throw headlong into this arms race, synonymous with significant advantages on the track, and the strangulation of small teams, condemned to suffer or ruin themselves to acquire these expensive technologies. It was Williams who pulled it off the best. His mastery of active suspension, coupled with the Renault V10, made the FW14 be the absolute weapon of the 1992 season in the hands of Nigel Mansell. In 1993, again with Alan Prost's FW15 which pushes the concept even further, making the professor say that he is piloting a real little Airbus, piloted suspension, traction control, ABS, fly-by-wire accelerator, power steering. Williams is particularly keen to test a new transmission system, the CVT or continuously variable transmission, a project working has been working on since the mid-1980s. The speed variator of a CVT gearbox is therefore made up of two pulleys whose grooves are of variable spacing. Depending on the distance between the walls of the pulleys, the belt enters more or less close to the center, and thus changes the ratio. Generally, the ratio is chosen by a centrifugal device, depending on the rotational speed of the engine. The faster the motor spins, the higher the gear ratio. This is obviously a popularization of the principle since the CVT is made up of several other mechanical and electronic elements. Such a device makes it possible, a priori, to use an engine at its optimum operating speed, to minimize energy consumption, to maximize the power and the torque available, or to avoid sudden changes in speed due to the bearings of the gear ratios. The Williams engineers finally found the materials capable of withstanding the 850 horsepower delivered by the Renault V10. In July 1993, on the small circuit of Pembury, Alan Menu and David Coulthard released an FW15 equipped with the CVT system designed in collaboration with the Van Dorn company, the company behind the famous staff Variomatic. No official chrono filters, but the video shot for the occasion speaks for itself, the perception of the noise of an F1 car changes radically with an engine at constant optimal speed, producing a monotonous sound. The only variation in sound occurs when the car goes from its idling 12,500 revolutions per minute, used for launching, to its constant running speed of 15,000 revolutions per minute. Coulthard, very enthusiastic, evokes an increased comfort of piloting and a better stability in curve, although the engine braking is less effective. Above all, some echoes in the paddock whisper that the FW15 CVT would have driven several seconds faster than the single-seater with a conventional gearbox. Anyway, following the rumors of delirious performances, it was enough for the fear to react. In the regulations for 1994 was added a point stipulating that Formula One cars had to have between 4 and 7 fixed gear ratios at the front. A roundabout way of condemning the CVT to the closet. Whatever the cost, innovations were going well. At the same time, Benetton tested a four-wheel steering system at Estoril. All this was banned, but other problems will arise, against a backdrop of difficult-to-drive single-seaters, serial accidents and also cheating. On the other hand, the principle of continuously variable transmissions has experienced a boom in the automobile series. <laughs>